Come on through, cocky. I want to put my soapbox. That's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for season one. This is episode 10, which is the season finale of 911. And um, yeah, we've actually reached the end. Um, it's been good. And this, this episode was no different than the other nine. It was really a good one. We found out right away that uh, Abby's mother actually had a, her, it was due to her, Alzheimer and all of that, but it was a pulmonary embolism that actually took her out, you know, which canceled her off. Um, yeah, so that was what ended everything for her. Um, Abby is in a space. We actually see Abby kind of, she has this whole thing where she feels kind of lost because now there's this whole piece of her life that's missing, you know, where she's been so busy. So now she's not so busy and she's starting to see that there's some things that's missing. And she's like, boy, I gotta, I have to find me so I can move along. You know, I gotta get things together with all the things that I've kind of lost. Um, and how much of myself that I've actually put off. And, um, a lot of that came to a head and she was able to see it when her brother came in town, you know, for to get everything together about the mother. And he was thinking that Buck was actually living in the house. He was like, this is good. This is good. It's like, he's not living here. He just spends a lot of time here helping me through the thing. Um, but in going through some of the stuff, they were going through like different little things and finding out different things about Abby that she's not celebrating or talking about but it's like these things are like monumental things she was actually in the olympics she had qualified for olympics and all of this and she just had things like packed away like you know she just put her whole life aside to take care of her mom so it started coming to a head and it's like boy i gotta really i need to find me to make sure that i'm gonna be happy um yeah and we'll talk about that more in a minute so that was that Okay, so first case, we actually get a call for a woman who is calling to her husband just went crazy and he's trying he's trying to get her and you hear him banging on the door and her like it sounds like he is a whole abusive situation going on. He's banging on the door trying to get to her and she's like, No, 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 she's calling that is called nine one one. And it's a woman, she has this British accent. It's like, okay, cool. So we get in there, we found out that the man is all busted up. Busted! I've got a bit, got blood running on the top of his head. What we found out is that the woman has taken and cold cocked him upside his head with a with a picture in a frame, um, and it was just a whole thing. The whole scenario, everything said that he was abusive. He was trying to beat her ass, and she got away. But that wasn't what happened at all. Um, Athena's dealing with her. Bobby's dealing with him. They're to put the man in handcuffs. Athena lures the lady out and the lady's talking and everything. And then we're, we find out after a few minutes of Dylan, one, the woman ain't British. Two, ain't never been to the UK. Three, all this stuff she's talking about, she's sitting around, she's been watching Dalton Abbey. Child. And um, here it was, she's a stroke victim. She didn't have like a mini stroke and it does scramble her brain waves. And she had these hiccups, like these really uh, aggressive hiccups. And that's when Athena was like, mm -mm, that's a, a symptom of a stroke. You know, it happens. Well, her brain waves have actually gotten shifted from the stroke. And this is what was going on. She done went crazy and then bam Tam and got her mind all made up to some things that are totally different. So they got her together. You know, they got them together and got them on out of there. And that's was like, I said, wow. Crazy, crazy, crazy. That was really interesting. Um, and they actually call, I can't even think of the name that they use for that. There, There is actually a name for that. 
Um, you all can Google it. But yeah, it was that was really wild. The, the boy, the mind is a, a it's a tool. It's, it's interesting. Um, next we see Athena dealing with her husband, and this is the first weekend that she's going to be without the kids. The kids are actually going away, and she was kind of having. A, it was like she was going through like an early empty nest syndrome. And the kids were like, "Girl, you crazy child. We fine. We're out." You know, we ain't got time for that. We we gone. They were fine. The husband naturally was fine. And he was saying, well, are you going to be okay? Or you, is it a problem about, you know, my boyfriend? Or she's like, no, it's not anything, period. Just I just feel funny the fact that this will be the first time that the kids are not going to be here. I ain't got to rush back home. When I do get home, ain't nobody going to be here. And he's like, oh, he hugged her or whatever. She's like, yeah, whatever. I was like, girl, get over it, honey. Trust me, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. And he called a little bald headed man. Chain him back up to something else. Don't worry about it. Because your husband, he's getting chained up to something, honey. Anyway, moving on. Okay, we go down to this psychic shop. Here, there's a man. They're putting him in the body bag, and you hear his body talking. We can hear him. He's like saying, I'm not dead. I'm not dead. So this is a whole nother crazy one. This thing, this man, uh, man gets all the way to the morgue. They're about ready to crack his chest open to do the autopsy. And he was able to move. And he's, because you can hear him talking like, oh my God, move something, move something. He's like talking to himself. And he ended up moving his arm. Baby, the worker passed out and the little tooled and sliced him on the side on his leg and balled his leg up. The man ended up having, he has this really bad case of narcolepsy and something else, but he goes into this whole, like he'll fall out into like a dead sleep and his vitals aren't, it says that he's dead. And he said, this was like the third time this had happened to him. He ended up calling 911. He took the man's cell phone and called 911 and they came down there to get him and everything. And, um, He's saying, you know, this is basically the third time this has happened to him. And they're like, well, you should wear a bracelet or something like that. And he's like, no, he was another crazy honey. He said he wanted to keep it a secret because every time that it happens to him, he wakes up like a different person and gets to really um, appreciate life. And I was like. So one of these times you ain't going to wake up in time and you're going to really appreciate being buried alive. But okay, whatever. They were like, whatever, child. We can't make you do nothing. Said so people are so strange. Um, then we actually see Henrietta and Karen again. And Henrietta's begging Karen for forgiveness. Yet again. And this time... She's listening to her. She's like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just afraid. And, you know, this, that thing, and the other. I said, okay. So, yeah, they talked about it. It was what it was. And they went on their separate ways. Um, then we have Buck and Abby. Now, with everything else they got Abby and Buck have going on, Buck then had like three different episodes where somebody has approached them on the street and then girls getting upset they're on the internet to about you just was talking to me and this that thing and the other and then now you all shady with me like you don't know who i am and you're seeing me and this that and the other and so abby's like wait a minute i thought you weren't doing this anymore he's like i promise you i'm not here we find out he he's been catfished somebody that took his profile picture they up on myspace i said lord have mercy Finds out later on it was a man that was a shut-in who was doing all this. When they, you know, they ended up, Chen pulled, found the man's IP address. They used the IP address to actually go to the man's house. You know, this was off the record because Buck was pissed. He went and found out the man had done passed away. Charlie had maggots in him and everything else. He had been in there dead for a couple of days. So that was like a whole mess. And um, he lived in like a trailer park. It was a mess. It was a mess. And then there was a whole battle back and forth with the coroner because Buck was like, there's people out there wanting to take pictures and all this kind of stuff. And he's like, mm -mm. he said, you have to do the embalming process here inside. Give the man some dignity. So that was like a whole big mess. And then 
It was nasty. It was nasty. I said, Lord have mercy. Only Ryan. <laughs> Only Ryan would do this. Only you would write this like this. But it was like, it was a mess. But they took care of it. Okay, then we see, next is this guy who's on a motorcycle. He's a motorcycle. Um, he's a father. He's a regular father. And he lives separate from the son. So he had told the son all about how he's going to buy this red Harley and all this. He bought it. And on the way to pick the son up, gets into a really bad car accident that literally ripped him in two. And part of him was over there, and part of him was over there. You can see his intestines and stuff. But see, Brian Murphy was really doing it up this one. He was really trying to make us get rid of our lunch. But he's over there, and the man was still talking. He ended up having, he spoke to his son on the phone. Spoke to the son on the phone, cell phone, all the way up to his last breath. And Bobby, like, held the phone for him, and they talked. And, and he went ahead and talked, and then he tapped on out. Um, that whole little situation kind of took Bobby down. You know, the whole thing with the son and just the 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 fact of losing the man and all that. Because remember, Bobby's on this thing about saving folks. Can't save him. It was what it was. And Athena actually took and she consoled Bobby at that point. He was like, I know this is so unprofessional. She's like, it's all right. I mean, this happens. It is what it is. So he ended up asking her, will you go somewhere with me? She's like, I will. So he took her um, to the church and asked her, would you pray with me? And they spoke and everything. And that was that. Earlier on, we actually seen Bobby. He was trying to do some things different. He's talking about, you know, going on a date and different things like that. He had been on a dating site and stuff. And then with all the stuff that was going on with Bucky, he's like, ooh, that might be a mistake. You know what I mean? So that was really funny. So that was that. That was going on. I mean, Chen was telling him, mm -mm, you'll be fine. Then I had to laugh. Chen, that ran into, because you know I said there was like people coming, a couple people that just came to the firehouse looking for Buck and snap it out. Baby, the one woman that come looking for Buck Chen had to calm her down and ended up throwing that Mac on her and ended up he decided to go ahead on and date her and him and her actually linked up and clicked and they started dating. I said, well, isn't that something? So I had laughed at that really good. Um, Abby gets to Buck and tells Buck, you know what? She found she's going through some stuff and seeing that going to Dublin, Ireland was on her mother's bucket list and she had never gone. And she said, you know, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. And he's like, huh? She's like, yeah, I'm going to go. And she's like, he says, well, how long? Well, I don't know. I'm just, I'll go. I'll probably be gone for a few months. I was like, what the hell is wrong with her? But he said, you know, I'm going to, that's fine. I'm going to work with you. This, that. I said, girl, down this to you. Mm. I don't know about all that now, Abby. That's I guess you got to do what you got to do for you, but now he had a sex addiction. Y'all weren't having sex. Y'all have begun having sex and all of these things and dating each other, like outwardly dating each other, and now you're going to go to Dublin, Ireland for a couple of months. Girl, you really pushing it, but we'll see what happens next season. I said, oh, she's doing too much. She even got on my nerves in this episode. You can find yourself over here, honey, in the States. What are you giving? Anyway, that was that. Karen decided to come home. She told Henrietta, I'm going to try it. You better not make me regret this. But she came home. So that's where we ended that. And then we see Bobby. Bobby's getting ready for a date. Chen's getting them together. You know, said, wow. So he didn't actually set up a date. And we see him looking at members of a black book took the black book and threw it into the garbage. So he's like letting that whole thing go. And then we see Bobby sit down for his date. And guess who the date was with? It's a dinner date with Athena. I said, well, get out of here. And then, of course, you know, we had this narration about sometimes, you know, the people you look for is right in front of your face. I said, Lord have mercy. Interesting. Very, very interesting. So this was what led us out. I said, well, that was a hell of a cliffhanger until next season but again i enjoyed it i was like oh my gosh so i will talk to you guys next season athena and bobby can you believe that huh <sighs> okay anyway i enjoyed this this was like a great series it really was i hope they don't change a 
thing. I think just continue on. And yeah, I think everything will be fine. Don't go to making a whole bunch of changes. Come on back and keep on doing what you was doing. All right, you guys, I'll catch you next season. Later.